So I wanted to share with you all my story. Because I had, a, I had an experience that was very similar to Bobby. And by the way, when we took this picture, anybody remember Zayers? Zayers store, right? I got off the bus, my dad said, you know what? Go, go, go get dressed, put on your best outfit. I said, what's going on? Put on your best outfit, son. We're about to go take some pictures. Zayers is having a sale. <laughs> and this is the outcome. Now, back then, my dad had an afro. Now he looks like how I'm looking, right? But my point is, when I was in first grade, I had a very similar experience as Bobby. I couldn't read. Now the difference is, Bobby tried to read. Bobby practiced. <laughs> I didn't practice. But here's why. Here's why I didn't practice. My mother and my father divorced when I was around two years old. And so when they divorced, my, my, my father stayed up here in the, the Elgin area. My mother moved to Springfield. Now, my mother dropped out of school when she was a junior. My father dropped out when he was in eighth grade. So my family and I, we moved to Springfield and we lived in housing projects. Low income areas. And so because my mother dropped out of school, she didn't have many financial means. So she worked like two or three jobs. She, she wasn't home. She was working to provide for us. So I would go to school to try to learn how to read. But then when I, when I, when I got home, I didn't have anyone to practice with me. So I didn't practice. I was playing the Atari. Anyone remember the Atari? <laughs> ColecoVision, right? All day, I'm playing Atari. By the end of the first grade year, the principal called my mom. You know, we want you to come in for a meeting. There's a problem. So we went to the meeting, my mom and I went to the meeting, and the principal said, you know, we have to retain your son. He can't read. And so my mom, she, she, what could she do? Okay, let's get him to, to learn how to read. So they retained me. And this was horrible. I'll tell you why. First of all, all of my peers progressed to the second grade. I was left in first grade. Even worse, my birthday is October 13th. What does that mean? So not only am I retained, I'm held back, but I'm, re I'm retained and my birth I'm getting older. So let me tell you how old I was. I was 15 in the eighth grade, 16 in the ninth grade, 17, 10th grade, 18, 11th grade, 19 years old as a senior. And I'm not saying 19 as I'm walking across the graduation stage. I'm saying 19 right when the school year started. And I, I, I used to hate my birthdays because you go to school, what's the first question people ask you? How old did you turn? How old are you? So I would have tried to avoid my peers. It was horrible. I wanted to skip school. I had a social emotional issue because I had this issue with myself, being the oldest person in the school system. But the reality is, throughout the entire first grade year, I didn't receive any additional supports in the school system. My mom was notified at the end of the school year. No supports in between. That was the old practice. Very ineffective. All right, so let's talk about how we do things nowadays. So now we use this model, many of you may have heard of the response to intervention model, RTI. And so the basic concept 
surrounding RTI is that students who struggle will get more support. And here's the deal. Here's what we know. Students who struggle academically don't necessarily need an IEP. What they need is more time to learn the content in smaller groups. And what the data show is that when we give students more time to learn content in smaller groups, they learn. So in years past, when students were identified as having a deficit, we would evaluate immediately. And if a student is showing academic deficits, if you evaluate, what are the data gonna show? That he's low. So with this model, this model is actually a prevention, intervention, and identification model. So we use the model to prevent academic deficits. We also use the model to intervene when we identify deficits. And we use the model to identify if a student requires specialized services. And so the way the model works, works is at the tier one, three different tiers, at the tier one level, it's kind of like gen ed. All students receive the same amount of supports. If we find that, as I did in first grade, if we find that students struggle based on assessments, we'll give that student more time, additional support. So that would be tier one plus tier two. If the student still struggles while receiving tier one and tier two supports, we'll provide additional support in even smaller groups. If the student is still struggling with all of these supports, chances are it might be a learning disability.